Hello everyone. Today the topic we're going to talk about is inverse trigonometric functions. So um, what we're going to be talking about today is the definition of these functions, some examples of the this um, inverse uh, function. We're going to talk about the domains and ranges of these functions, some pie charts and equivalences that we're going to use for some some few examples in the latter part of the video. Now, inverse functions undo anything that is operating on x in the original function. And it can be used in a variety of different ways, but let's just go ahead and start with a simple definition, let's say, or example of this function. So let's go ahead and start with the function f, f of x equal to, let's say, square root of x. Now, the inverse of this would be the function f inverse of x equals to, and the inverse of x squared, or what would undo it, would be x squared. So square root of x, as we all know, is the opposite, or the, un the undoing action of x squared. So... Let's say another example is when you use the trigonometric symbols and phrases in these operations, such as y equals sine of x. Now, following our pr the procedure that is typically used in, in solving these trigonometric functions, it's a lot of steps, but it all sums down to just adding this, this symbol. So um, instead of just doing the whole plotting out, we can just know that the inverse of whatever trigonometric function would just be equal to the inverse with the one right here. So this is the opposite of this, or it undoes the square root. And well, this is just the inverse of the sine function. And just to, just to make sure that this is not an exponential negative one, as I'm not going to be confused with like, you know, writing a fraction, and then if it's minus one, you just move it up top. It is an inverse negative one, so it is. it does have a difference. So normally, a regular sine function would have the y as a sine value and the angle on the x side. So this would be the sine value, and this would be the angle. But for inverse functions, it's the opposite, having the sine on the other side and the, the corresponding angle with the y. So this would be the angle. Let me write that a little bit better. This would be the angle, and this would be the sine value. Sine value. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about domains and ranges and see how each different trigonometric function, whether it be cosine, sine, or tangent, has different values and how it affects differently each problem. So each function each function has a restricted domain. Let's go ahead and write it out. Domain. Each function is either pi over two, pi two, or was negative one and one. And it's it reflects if a certain function passes through a horizontal line test in which the inverse results can be reflected in a graph. So for example, let's just go ahead and write out this graph right here. And as we all know, cosine, for example, cosine and sine moves in a wave in a graph, right? So let's say we take a portion, let's say this portion right here, and we write it out here. So once we take a horizontal line like this, and we move it directly upwards or vertically, we, we will know which um, different quarters of the whole pie graph, let's say the whole pie graph we are going to be working with. So it, that's why we check the domain and range for each one. So... For example, um, as we all know, each different trig function has a unique domain and range to represent each different graph layout. So let's start with 
cosine or um, cosine inverse. Let's go ahead and just clear some space. So cosine inverse cosine has a domain that is negative one one and the range will be zero pi. So this would indicate that the that for cosine the ranges move through the first and the second quarter. And as we know, the quarters are one, two, three, four. So cosine moves through these two quarters. Let's say now for tangent, the domains are in, let's say if tangent, the domains are all real numbers, all real numbers, and the range would be from negative pi squared to pi squared. So in this case, we would be looking for tangent as working through the first and fourth quarters. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's say take some examples to show how we can use this pie chart and use it to write some examples for these inverse functions. Okay, so let's say inverse sine of negative 30. Okay, so since we know we're going to be working in the first and fourth quarters, so first and fourth, we would, we would, we would take the value of negative one half and use it to move it in the fourth quarter. And since we have pie charts like this, for example, then we have um, different quarters like we said, but in a pie chart, we can have, we can work in different quarters and whatnot, but the degrees of the pie chart will always stay the same. 180, 270, and then all the way back to 360 here with the zero. But it doesn't matter what quarters of the pie chart we're going to be working with. In, in reference to which side is the, the beginning and the end of the range that we're going to be working with, the degrees stay the same. So, for example, uh, like we said with inverse sine of negative 30, we're working in the first and fourth, and we would take the value of negative half and move it to the fourth quarter. And in this case, negative one half is here. And it's negative one half is equal to the same thing as 11 pi over six. And in radians, so, um, it's different. But since we're moving down, since it's negative 30, this is going to be negative. And the equivalence of this would be 330 degrees. If you look at it from the pie chart perspective, but since we're moving from starting at zero downwards, it's going to be negative 30 degrees, and that is our answer. Let's go ahead and write a different example and write inverse cosine of, let's say, zero. And that zero is kind of bad. Let's go. Okay. Inverse cosine of zero would be working with the first and second quarters like we saw before. So let's just go ahead and write that out. And this one too, okay. So cosine is working with the first and second, as we saw. And since we're working with this one right here, the initial value of zero is right here in the middle, since we either move this way or this way when working with, with angles. So, if the initial value is up here, then since we know that the degrees are the same, 
in whatever situation or whatever function that we're using, then if it's up vertically, it's 90 degrees. So the answer to this negative cosine is 90 degrees. That will be the answer for this problem. So basically it's just whenever you have a certain trigonometric function and we're working with the inverse of that, it's just making sure that you know which domains and ranges you are working with, making sure that you know which quarters um, the, the function works on, and then you can just use the pie chart with the equivalences of the radians and get your specific um, lines. It can be either you're here, or you're here, or you're here, and with different quarters, you know which degrees you're going to be ending up on. So um, later on, we can touch up on more examples and how to use the pie chart effectively, but just a simple touch up like this would be, would be great. So thank you so much for watching the video. Leave a comment with any suggestions you may have. So, and this can allow us to make better videos and support us in general. And please remember to like the video and subscribe and have a good day.